Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Giancarlo, and I work on the web platform team at Uber. Uh, and I'm going to talk about Fusion, uh, which is a plugin based web framework. So uh, in this talk, we're going to first go over why we built Fusion, and we're going to use Express as a case study. Um, then we're going to talk about the overview of the Fusion API and architecture. Uh, and then we're going to go over what, uh, how Fusion solves the problems that we had with Express. Uh, so here's a basic example of an Express app. If you're not familiar with Express, it's a, a common uh, web framework for uh, Node.js. I mean, for a long time, we were using Express for uh, most of our web applications. Um, so in this example, we first uh, create an Express instance, and then we create a couple of clients, a logger and a stats client. Uh, and then we've got a couple middlewares, um, and then we register those middlewares on our application. And our middlewares are just doing really basic things. And here we're just uh, appending a few clients onto the re request object, a logger, a stats client, and a session. Um, so this has a couple problems. Uh, one of the main problems is that this requires extensive mocking for testing. Um, so we have these clients that are just created in scope. Um, so these potentially are doing side effects that we need to mock out during tests. Uh, another problem is that this has really poor support for static typing, whether you're using either TypeScript or Flow. Um, so in, in these middlewares, we're appending these clients onto the re request object. Uh, and this is a really common pattern with Express, adding things onto rec or res.locals or uh, various properties on these request and response objects. So the problem here is that this request object has a different type in every single middleware, and that type depends on the order that these middleware are run. Um, so trying to write static types here is, is really, really difficult. And this sort of relates to this next problem where we have error-prone refactoring, and this is due to this order dependence of these middlewares. So let's say that I wanted to uh, add this rec.stats uh, client to where I'm creating my request logger. Um, so this means that my stats middleware needs to run before my logger middleware. That way I have access to that rec.stats. So naively, we might just reorder these and swap and throw logger underneath uh, the stats middleware. Um, but this causes a bug separately in our application because now our session middleware does not have access to our logger. Um, so you basically end up with this spaghetti of implicit dependencies between your middlewares and any refactoring and reordering can cause bugs um, at runtime, and it's really difficult to find these. And finally, the issue we had is Express being a server-side only framework, we had a lot of problems with creating shared abstractions that go across the server and the browser. So this is a, a very basic example of integrating Styletron, uh, which is a CSS and JS library into Express. Uh, Styletron is something we use, but you can uh, think about this example as applying to any CSS and JS library. So we found ourselves doing these types of things. So on the server, we need to wrap our React element in a provider. Uh, we need to execute our server-side render and pull out those critical styles that are used in that render and then serialize those into the HTML. Uh, and then on the client, we basically do the reverse. So on the client, we deserialize from the HTML and we wrap our element in a provider and we render to the DOM. So we, we noticed that this pattern is really common in any uh, type of thing you're trying to build into a universally rendered web application. So here's Redux uh, integrated into an Express app, and you'll notice the, the pattern here. So on the server, we're wrapping our element in a provider, we're running our server-side render, we're extracting that Redux state, and then we're serializing it into the HTML. And then the same thing in the browser, we're gonna deserialize that state from the server, we're gonna wrap our element in a provider, and render to the DOM. And we'll see this continue with basically every single uh, one of these libraries. So if you're trying to do any styled component, um, any like CSS and JS library, all different types of state management libraries like Apollo, GraphQL, MobX, all of these have this pattern. And it's really hard to create uh, a shared abstraction that lets you encapsulate this in a universal way. So a quick summary of our problems, uh, extensive mocking for tests, uh, poor support for static typing, error-prone refactoring, and a poor encapsulation mechanism, specifically with respect to universal code. So uh, now we're going to go over uh, the architecture of Fusion and then talk about how we solve uh, a lot of those problems. So Fusion has type-safe dependency injection. Um, this is really, really valuable for writing robust code um, that uh, is easily testable. 
we have a single entry point that's shared for both the server and the browser. So this means that by default, all code is universal. And this is a concept that's uh, very different from, uh, from most other web frameworks. Uh, we have a plugin system that has a universal API and explicit dependencies. Um, so plugins are the same on the server and the browser and all of your uh, dependencies are defined explicitly. And finally, we have a standard for working with virtual DOM elements. Um, and we've done this in a way that's agnostic of the rendering engine. So you can use Fusion with React or Inferno or Preact or whatever your favorite virtual DOM library is. So this is a, a diagram of, of sort of what the anatomy of a Fusion JS app looks like. Uh, and at its core, it's, uh, it's a very simple abstraction. We basically have a mapping of tokens to plugins. A token you can think of just as a placeholder for a value or an interface. And a plugin is just an encapsulation mechanism that allows you to define dependencies, provide an API, and hook into uh, request and page load life cycles through providing a middleware. There's two special tokens. Uh, one is the element token, and this is where this is how you register your virtual DOM element, and the render token, which uh, describes how you take that virtual DOM element and and convert it into HTML. And this is putting these into the dependency injection system is how we keep Fusion agnostic of the rendering engine. So here's a very basic example of a Fusion app. Um, so you'll notice we have a single entry point. So this is uh, source slash main main.js. Uh, and this is the entry point for both the server side code and the browser code. Um, it exports a pure function, um, which means that all the side effects are delegated to the runtime. So anything like starting up a server, listening on a port, uh, rendering to the browser, uh, none of that is going to uh, exist in your uh, main source code, which is really, really nice for testing. And we'll, we'll show some examples of that in a minute. We also have the ability to write environment-specific code if you need to, because there will be cases where you don't want universal code. Um, so we have these uh, compiler macros um, that you see uh, where we check uh, if you're in Node, and then you can run server-only code. And if you're in the browser, you can run browser-only code. Um, and this also allows you to um, call out to other files. Um, so we don't have to keep everything in main.js. So you can you know, have a set of files that are only run on the server and a set of files that are only run on the browser. Uh, it's important to note that uh, the vast majority of your code is still going to be component-driven APIs. Um, and most of the time, you're not actually working in main.js. Main.js is sort of like the, the container entry point. And all of your business logic can just use React components or your favorite virtual DOM library, uh, just like you're used to. Uh, same thing with higher order components and coming up hooks when those are officially released. Um, so uh, all that stuff works uh, just like uh, you're used to in other uh, web frameworks. So uh, let's dive a little bit deeper into what a Fusion plugin looks like. So a plugin um, is basically a container for declaring dependencies, providing an API, and providing a middleware. Um, so we declare our dependencies by uh, providing a map in our depths key. Uh, we provide a programmatic API by returning some value from our provides function. And we provide a middleware uh, by uh, adding a, returning a middleware from our middleware function. For the sake of time, we're going to focus on middleware here, um, but we have good documentation on all the rest. Um, so for our middleware, we, we use a COA-like interface. Um, the server is actually built on top of COA. Uh, if you're not familiar with COA, uh, COA has a really cool concept of composition um, where you run a bunch of code before await next and then a bunch of code after await next. Um, and this context object that's passed to all middleware is how you work with the request and response API. Um, there's a couple differences between our, uh, our middlewares and COA though. We have a special property, context.element, and this is gonna be your virtual DOM element. So this is what allows plugins to hook into the virtual DOM tree. Um, all, of our plugin, all of our middleware are also universal. So not only do we run these middleware on the server, we also run them in the browser. On the server, they run on each request. And on the browser, they run on the initial page load. We've also added some additional contextual meaning to what it means to await next. So in COA, they have the concept of downstream and upstream. Um, so downstream is the execution that happens uh, before await next, and upstream is the execution that happens after. 
uh, we've added rendering um, at the point of await next. So you can also think of downstream as pre-render and upstream as post-render. And this becomes in really handy when you're building universal plugins that need to do things like set up on pre-render, render, and then clean up on post-render. The other thing that we've added is because we have dependency injection and explicit dependencies, we can sort your middleware in topological order so that uh, you, they always run in the correct order. And we'll go more into what this means in a bit. So this is a diagram of what, it, what the uh, execution of this downstream upstream um, looks like. So uh, starting on the left, we have an incoming HTTP request. Uh, and then we run the downstream of every middleware. Um, and then at the bottom of the stream, we uh, render. And then we run the upstream or post render of every middleware. Um, and earlier we mentioned that uh, Fusion exports a pure function. So you'll notice that the Fusion core separates uh, all of the plugins from any side effects. And this is what, how we uh, are able to write really uh, testable plugins. So uh, with that quick overview of Fusion, let's talk about how we solve the problems that we had with Express. So originally we had this issue where we required extensive mocking for our tests. So to solve this, we have a pure application entry point that lets you import your application and then dependency injection allows one line replacements of any dependency. So this is an example of a test and we are able to just import some mock logger and then on line three here, we actually import the entry point of our whole app, and then we can use that to test. So we just call our entry point, and that gives us a reference to our application. Um, and then here, we can just register any uh, mocks we need and then continue with the test. Um, so I think this is what really highlights the benefits of having a pure entry point, is that in any of your tests, you can get access to your actual application and then uh, register any mocks, and then uh, you're able to test it really effectively. Uh, another problem we had was the mutable request object, and that was making static typing difficult. Um, so to solve this, we have no mutable request object. The context object is immutable. Um, and instead of uh, appending things to the request, we use dependency injection to give plugins uh, references to other plugins programmatic APIs. So in this example, we're declaring that we depend on a logger and the logger we're representing by this interface of this logger token. Um, and then you'll see our provides and our middleware function are dependency injected with that logger. Um, and this all works with static typing and you get really good type inference actually. So you don't even need to write the type of the logger. Um, you'll get the type of that logger will be inferred from the fact that you depended on the logger token. So this is really valuable, especially when combined with topological sorting, because your logger will always be instantiated before your middleware is executed. The other issue we had was order-dependent middlewares, and this relates to uh, the previous problem. So to solve this, we have all dependencies are explicit, and our plugins are sorted topologically. So if we go back to this original diagram, uh, these plugins are sorted such that all of their dependencies are above them in the stack. So in this case, plugin three would have dependencies on plugin one and two. Plugin two would only depend on plugin one. And if you have an invalid dependency tree, if you have something like a, a cycle in your dependency tree, we can know that immediately and air out before your application starts. We also have tools that we're building to help visualize this tree so you can very easily understand uh, what parts of your application depend on what other parts of your application. Um, and then when you're refactoring, you don't have to worry about order because they're sorted topologically. And finally, I think the, the most compelling uh, piece of the Fusion architecture is the ability to have these universal encapsulations. So there's a bunch of code up here, but this is basically the, the server-side and client-side integration of Styletron that we were showing before with an express application. So we have the server-side part that has to um, set up the app for server-side render and then a client-side part um, that has to sort of handle that. Um, and this becomes really difficult, especially when you start uh, trying to compose this with other abstractions. So if you're trying to also add Redux and also add GraphQL, you end up with a lot of uh, sort of like spaghetti um, initialization code that could be abstracted and shared. Um, so the solution to this is we have a single application entry point, which means that all code is universal by default. 
all our plugins are universal and the plugins can hook into the component tree. So the plugins themselves can do things like uh, add providers and handle serialization and deserialization. So this same integration in a Fusion app looks like this. Uh, you import your app, you import the plugin for Styletron, and you register the plugin. Um, and that can do everything that the uh, previous uh, set of code was doing. And the really nice thing about this is it, uh, it works really well when you want to compose with other abstractions. So if I want to add Redux, uh, it's actually really straightforward for adding more plugins. Um, so this is Styletron plus Redux. So now I'm just importing the Redux plugin and I'm registering the Redux plugin. And then here I'm also registering some dependencies that the Redux plugin has. So for example, the Redux plugin needs to have access to your reducer. Um, so it exposes a token and allows you to register a reducer on that token. Um, so having this standard abstraction that allows you to encapsulate universal code is really powerful. Um, and it's let us uh, create a lot of shared code that we can then roll out to uh, lots of web applications at Uber. So in summary, Fusion is a web framework that's built for universal virtual DOM applications. Uh, it's agnostic of the rendering engine. So if you're not using React, but you're using some other virtual DOM API, you can easily integrate with Fusion. Um, it uses plugins and dependency injection to provide a robust way of encapsulating and sharing code. We have a pretty long list of plugins that are already written. Um, but it's very easy to contribute your own plugins and publish them. Um, so uh, if you're interested, please uh, contribute some plugins. Um, we have some links here. Uh, FusionJS.com is our uh, documentation. Um, we have the FusionJS org on GitHub. Uh, we have a Slack channel. And uh, if you're interested in working for Uber and working on Fusion, um, check out our career space. And that's all. Thank you.